Well, hi guys, it's that time. That's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, I'm in here and I'm ready to do round two on is God in complete control of every single thing all the time, every minute of the day? Because I'm going to tell you, that is the worst doctrine in the entire church. It doesn't matter what your denomination is. It is horrendously bad. What it does is it makes, it's a faith killer. You know, people who are in the church don't even feel like there's a reason to pray because, I mean, God's just going to do what God's going to do, right? And then people on the outside of the church hear us teach crazy stuff like that, and they're like going, who in the world would serve a God that would take a woman's baby away from her? Okay, so he kills the baby and scars her for life, and she's just going to go to church and be faithful and serve him. See, none of this really... When you get on the outside of the church, none of this crazy stuff that we, you know, we just hear these things and we're told a little at a time as we grow up in the church. And we, we just don't even question some of the stuff we're told because we think that the people in the pulpit or the teachers are all, they have an understanding of God's word. And what I have found more than anything is that people will try to put a theology in writing to explain their personal experiences that they don't understand. And the reason they do that is because they don't have an experiential intimacy and knowledge of God. They don't know his goodness and understand his love. And here's a bigger issue. This is probably the biggest issue, really. Okay. I told you yesterday that there's there used to be more books in the Bible than there are now, even in the King James. You know, let's just use that as an example. There used to be 81 books in the King James Bible, and now there's only 66. And when those writings were taken away, it has watered down and made us lacking knowledge. That's all I know to say. We, we lack knowledge and understanding because of that. And so we don't understand a lot of the foundational things that we need to know. So today I'm going to take another swing at this. I'm going to hit this because quite honestly, guys, I'm just going to be uh, straight out today. I don't think I did a very good job yesterday teaching this, and I want to make sure that I teach it one more time because I really, I really want people to get set free from some crazy, twisted things that really ultimately make people not know if they can trust God. You know, you can't trust God if you don't know he's on your side. And if he's in heaven, either having he's sending orders out against you or he's allowing it to happen, then you can't trust him, okay? Uh, if you do not know what a person's going to do from one minute to the next, you can't trust them. And that, that's no different with God. We have to settle some things in our hearts so we can go full on knowing that he's for us and not against us, that he always has been for us, that we have an enemy that's against us, and God has done everything he can to set us free from that enemy. So let's hit Luke chapter 22, verse 31 again today. Now, I was talking about uh, how I was uh, on Facebook and a girl was explaining to me how Satan got permission from God and she could prove it through Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And of course, she sent me the uh, one of the translations. It's a newer translation that says that uh, Satan asked for Peter and quite honestly, that's not really a good word there. And I'm going to show you why I say that, okay? But let me throw this in for free today. The King James Bible and, and most all of the older versions of the Bible that were translated uh, since the mid-1800s came from the Byzantine manuscripts, which is in one part of the world, okay? And then after the 1850s, the newer translations were taken from the Alexandrian manuscripts, which are from a different part of the world, okay? And these manuscripts are somewhat different, okay? So the words are a little different. So when I say the newer translations, I'm talking about even the New King James, the New King James, not King James, because those are not from the same manuscripts. The New King James, the NIV, uh, NASB, ESV, different ones like that. See, they're all after the 1850s, okay? So let, let me just say that that's part of, of 
what we don't understand. But let's take a real good look at Luke 22, verse 31, because I want you to make sure you understand. Satan was not asking God for permission to have Peter. Satan was making a vehement demand of his legal right to Peter. Okay. Now, there is a difference. Okay. I can ask you to get me a glass of tea. That is a request. Or I can get really loud and angry and start stomping my feet and demand that I get my glass of tea. Those are two different things, guys. And I want to show you that in our Bibles. Here we go. The word ask is in our Bible. That's A-S-K. It's in our New Testament 70 times. And it's number 154. And that means to make a request, okay? And even some of the newer translations will show for us to make our request known to God, okay? Uh, and here's another word, ask, E-D, A-S-K-E-D. That's number 1905 in the Strong's Concordance, and that's 56 times in our King James Bibles. And that means to inquire about and to ask questions, okay? So if I'm inquiring about something, I'm wanting information. All right, now the one word here in Luke twenty two thirty one, the King James says desire, which is not the very best translation. It's better than the word ask, but it still doesn't show the uh, strength of that word there. The actual strength of that word, it's number 1809 in the Strong's Concordance, and it is found this one and only time. And the word venomant is part of the... Uh, meaning of that word. So Satan was vehemently demanding his legal right. And, and that word has a connotation to it of having a legal right to demand it as well. And here's what we have to understand, that before the cross, Satan had certain legal rights that Satan does not have anymore after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And I said it yesterday, over in, well, I said a lot yesterday, I know, but like in Psalms 115, 16, it says the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth God gave to the sons of Adam or humankind, okay? And then yesterday I also told you that in Matthew 28, when Jesus resurrected, he said that all, A-L-L, -L, all Authority, that means legal rights. That word authority there means legal rights have been given to me. And that was Jesus saying that, okay? So let me keep moving a little deeper into this because one of the viewers, but before I move past this, I want to say this one more time because uh, so, I want to be clear here. Satan was not asking permission from God. Satan was demanding his legal rights for him to be able to take Peter and do what he wanted to with him. And watch this. Jesus was warning Peter that Satan had set his sights on him. And Jesus prayed that Peter would remain strong. Now, I want you to think about this. Jesus did not say, Satan asked permission to have you. And my father said, yes. Jesus did not say, Satan has asked permission to have you. And my father said, no. Jesus did not say that. Jesus said, in the Greek, that Satan had demanded Peter. And he was invoking his legal right to Peter, just like he had a legal right to Job in the Old Testament. See, guys, we were before the cross. Both of these, Job and in Luke 22, 31, these are all before Jesus' finished work, where Jesus could make a declaration, all legal rights, authority, have been given to me in heaven and on earth. I love that. Okay, now I want to roll into answering a question from one of the viewers. She said, could you, get, uh, could you talk a little bit about the verse in the Bible about the accuser of the brethren day and night? And yes, I will be happy to do that. This is in Revelation uh, chapter 12, verse 8 uh, through 12. And I'm just going to uh, start in verse 10. How about that? And John is saying, And I heard in a loud voice in heaven saying, The salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority and power of his Christ, the Messiah, has now come. The accuser, watch this, of our brethren and sisters who accused 
past tense, them day and night before our God has been thrown down and cast down. Did you see where that's a past tense right there? So this had been going on, but now they're rejoicing right here because he's been cast down. I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about that because that gets confusing. In Revelation chapter 1, verse uh, 19, right here clarifies, uh, and Revelation is, is a really hard book to understand, and the reason for it is it's past tense, present, and future. And I'm going to show you. It says, right, and this is Jesus talking, so write the things you see, have seen, what is now, and what will happen later after this. So see, we have three different tenses here. And I would petition you here that uh, Revelation 12.10 is a past tense. And now I'm going to prove to you what I'm talking about. Satan had legal rights before the cross, and now he doesn't. And I'm going to tie in as well Revelation 10 about its past tense as well. So here we go. I'm going to show you in Col Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. And I'm going to uh, use two translations. I'm going to use the Amplified Classic as well as the Expanded Bible because I want to mine out as much as I can in a short period. So here we go. This is in the Expanded Bible. When you were spiritually dead because of your sins and because you were not free from the power of your sinful self, your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ and he forgave all of our sins and transgressions. Now, verse 14, I'm going to go over to Amplify. And it says, Having canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note, the bond, with its legal decrees. Did you get that word legal? These legal decrees and demands, which was in force and stood against us. These regulations, decrees, and demands Jesus set aside and cleared completely out of the way by nailing it to his cross. So right there we see that Satan had certain legal rights and legal demands against mankind, and Jesus took it away and nailed it to the cross. Now I'm going to flip back to uh, the expanded Bible uh, for verse 15 because I like the way this says it. And Christ and it has God or Christ in parenthesis, stripped the spiritual rulers and powers of their authority, that means legal rights, of their authority. With the cross, Jesus won the victory and showed the world that they were powerless. And he made a public shame of them, a public spectacle. And here we go. Jesus, and I'm going to go over to the Amplified and read it here. It says, And God disarmed the principalities and powers that were raging against us and made a bold display and a public example of them, triumphing over them in him, being Jesus, in the cross. So right here we tie this together, and what we see is that before the cross, Satan had legal right to man through sin in the garden, where Adam rebelled against God and did what God told him clearly not to do. Okay, And now, after the cross, Satan has lost his legal rights to us. So guys, i got to hop off here. I love you, and I hope this teaching has blessed you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.